Hi, and welcome to the channel. In this video, I will talk about an unusual CPU, which, in my opinion, is an excellent choice for a DOS retro gaming PC. It is common knowledge that if you want to build a retro PC to play DOS games, you first have to decide what kind of games you want to play. And the reason for this is that different games were designed with different hardware in mind. For example, uh, the very first generation of DOS games were designed to run on XT-class machines with CGA or EGA graphics and the PC speaker sound. And I'm going to mostly ignore those games, because in my opinion they are not really worth playing today, with just a few exceptions. The golden era of DOS gaming really started when 386 CPUs, VGA graphics and additional sound cards became commonplace. And uh, this era lasted for roughly 8 years, from 1990 to about 1997, when most publishers abandoned DOS in favor of Windows. But even within this era, the games have wildly different performance expectations. Uh, for example, Wing Commander runs perfectly on a 25 MHz 386 CPU, but quickly becomes unplayable on faster PCs. Most adventure games made by LucasArts, such as The Secret of Monkey Island, also require a 386 machine. Other classic games, such as Ultima 7, were designed to run on a 33 or 40 MHz 486. Such games run too fast on a Pentium, or even on a faster 486 CPUs. On the other hand, the very last DOS games tend to have very high system requirements. They were really designed to take advantage of Pentium-class CPUs and uh, Super VGA graphics, which puts a lot of stress on weaker machines. In fact, games such as Quake, System Shock or Wing Commander 4 require a Pentium 2-class CPU for optimal performance, and the 486 machine would be way too slow to experience these games at their best. And uh, this means that ideally you would need at least three different computers to play all those games that are worth playing, a 386, a 486, and a Pentium 2. Obviously, not everyone wants to keep three retro PCs around. Uh, but there is a solution, because some hardware gives us additional flexibility. For example, the performance of Intel Pentium MMX uh, can be smoothly scaled down using the excellent set mal utility, which makes it viable for games that expect a slower processor. Phil from Phil's Computer Lab made a great video describing how it all works. This is a great option for DOS gaming, but I still think that the Pentium MMX is a bit too slow for the last generation of DOS games. But what if I told you that there is a retro CPU that can be as slow as a 386 or as fast as a Pentium 2? And surprisingly, this CPU was not made by Intel or AMD. Instead, it was made by Via Technologies, the same company that was a major manufacturer of PC chipsets in the late 90s and early 2000s. I am talking about the Via C3. Back in the day, this CPU was not popular at all because it was considered too slow. It arrived on the market when Intel already had fast Pentium 3 CPUs and the C3 simply could not compete with them in terms of performance. The 866 MHz version I have here only performs about as fast as a Pentium 2 clocked at 350 MHz, but I will talk about benchmark results a bit later. All via C3 CPUs use socket 370, the same socket as Intel Celeron and Pentium 3. There were several revisions of this processor. I don't want to go into details, but basically the third revision, codenamed Ezra, is what we are looking for, because it will give us the most flexibility in terms of performance scaling. Uh, the first two revisions, codenamed Samuel and Samuel 2, were too slow. 
The final revision called Nehemiah is also quite interesting. It's much faster than the Ezra, up to twice as fast in some benchmarks, but it does not scale down as smoothly. Maybe I will make a video about it in the future. One of the issues with these CPUs is that sometimes different revisions are difficult to tell apart. The best way to tell what you are looking at is the required voltage. All Ezra chips require 1.35 volts. Samuel and Samuel 2 run at 1.6 volts. And chips with the Nehemiah core require 1.4 or 1.45 volts. Another issue is motherboard compatibility. There is an official list of compatible motherboards, produced by VIA themselves, but it does not mention which revision of the CPU is compatible with which board. So if you want to buy one of them, you will have to do your own research. And I think that none of these motherboards would be a good choice for a DOS gaming PC. They are mostly based on VIA chipsets, and some of them don't even have any ISA slots for a Sound Blaster compatible sound card. In my opinion, the real magic starts when this CPU is paired with the motherboard based on the legendary Intel 440BX chipset. I use my C3 with Gigabyte GA6BXC Revision 2, which is one of the best 440BX motherboards you can get. Another classic board that is known to work with via CPUs is Asus P3BF Revision 103 or later. Since these motherboards are designed for slot 1 CPUs, you would also need a socket 370 to slot 1 adapter, such as this MSI MS6905 Master. Just be careful, because some adapters support only Celeron CPUs based on the Mendocino core, and you will need an adapter which supports at least Coppermine CPUs. Now that we've got the issues out of the way, let's get to some benchmark results. I have compared my VIA C3 running at 866 MHz to a Pentium 3 copper mine running at 700 MHz, and also to a Pentium MMX running at 200 MHz. The C3 and the Pentium 3 were benchmarked in the same system, meaning that all components were identical. For the Pentium MMX, I had to use a different motherboard, but the rest of the components were the same. Let's start with synthetic benchmarks. As you can see, in speed C's the Pentium 3 gets almost 800 points. The VIA C3 gets only 454 points despite its faster clock speed. Uh, this puts it roughly on the same level as a Pentium 2 running at 400 MHz. Obviously, this is much faster than the Pentium MMX, which manages only 154 points. Next is a Crisis 3D benchmark running at 640 by 480 and uh, in this benchmark the Pentium 3 is almost three times faster than the YC3, thanks to its really fast FPU. But the YC PU is still more than three times faster than the Pentium MMX. In PC player benchmark running at 320 by 200, the Pentium 3 is twice as fast as the YC3, and the gap between the YC3 and the Pentium MMX is not that large. But at 640 by 480, the YC CPU is more than twice as fast as the Pentium MMX. Next up is Doom. Uh, the Pentium 3 runs this game at 164 FPS. The YC3 runs it at 109 FPS, and the Pentium MMX manages 74 FPS, which is still a great result because Doom's engine is kept at just 35 FPS. In Quake, running at 640 by 480, the Pentium 3 gets more than 62 FPS, which is a great result. The game feels silky smooth. The YC3 manages 40.9 FPS, which looks kind of bad in comparison, but it is still more than twice as fast as the Pentium MMX, which produces only 15.2 FPS. And uh, let's be realistic. Almost 41 FPS in Quake 
running at 640x480 is nothing to scoff at, since Quake is one of the most demanding DOS games in existence. And the final test is Duke Nukem 3D. There is no built-in benchmark in this game, but it does have a frame rate display. And uh, just moving around the first level, it seems that the Pentium 3 manages about 110 FPS on average. On the YSC3, the game seems to run at about 80 FPS, and the Pentium MMX manages about 40 FPS. We have now established that while the YSC3 CPU is slower than the Pentium 3, it is still much faster than the Pentium MMX and can run even the most demanding DOS games. But what about games that require a much slower CPU? Well, this is where things get really interesting. All YSC3 CPUs are fully supported by SETMAL. This means that we can change the CPU multiplier on the fly, enable and disable L1 and L2 cache, and also enable and disable instruction cache and branch prediction. And if you are running the C3 on an Intel motherboard, things get even better, because most Intel 440BX motherboards are supported by Rayer's SMB tool. Thanks to this tool, it is also possible to switch the system bus frequency on the fly, and this gives us the ability to target a wide range of performance points without messing with jumpers or disabling the CPU cache in the BIOS. Let's look at some examples. This chart shows how the performance of the C3 scales in Doom. At the top bar represents the CPU running at full speed, and the other bars show performance at different settings. The legends on the left uh, show the bus speed, multiplier, and various CPU features that are turned off. BPD means branch prediction disabled, ICD means instruction cache disabled, and L1D means level 1 cache disabled. And as you can see, we can go from 109 FPS all the way down to 4.1 FPS. But the numbers on their own don't really mean anything, so let me show you what these numbers actually correspond to. And as it turns out, we can hit all of the important uh, performance points. This means that this PC will happily run basically every game from the golden era of DOS gaming. I will show you some examples of games we can run on this CPU that otherwise would be completely unplayable on a fast machine. Even Ultima 7, which is one of the most difficult games to get running at the correct speed, works absolutely perfectly. And I would also like to stress that these numbers are only a fraction of what could be achieved on this CPU. For example, if I disable the instruction cache and branch prediction and experiment with the bus speed and multiplier, I am able to hit multiple performance points between 486DX33 and 386DX33. Unfortunately, I cannot show every possible result on the chart, because otherwise it would become unreadable. So, that's it for this video, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please subscribe to the channel and hit the thumbs up button. See you next time.